God is good. Isn't his presence good this morning? Amen. You can be seated if you can after all of that goodness. We want to welcome you again to Covenant Fusion Church, especially if you're just tuning in online. We're so thankful that you took the time to join us for our service this morning. We know that you're going to get something good from today. We know we're going to get a good word. Amen. We know God's presence has already started a momentum this morning. God's doing something really big. I I think we should believe for that. Amen. Amen. A little bit out of order. And Pastor Warren, I hope you're listening. I know Liz is watching online this morning. We're thankful for you. We miss you. I want to share a small scripture with everybody this morning about our giving. It's from the book of Matthew, chapter 10, starting at verse 5. These twelve Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter a city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. And as I was searching God's word for a scripture to share today. I I had found this one and I was like the Holy Spirit put in my heart to read this one in particular. I said, God, it's not really as much about financial giving. He said it never has been. That's only one aspect, amen. That's what we preach from this pulpit, that giving financially is only one aspect, correct? But this morning I think he was giving us this for us to make a claim for our seed this morning. That our seed is, it says the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And here's what it means. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, and cast out demons. So we're going to put a claim on our seed this morning that it's a kingdom seed and is going to do all of these things. Amen. The Holy Spirit has been laying it on my heart, especially ever since um, the New Year's Eve service, that we need to believe to see these things. More than ever before. We can't stop. Just because this is the new age, because it's 2023 now, we, need this, we should be seeing more. More. So this morning, I know we have our seeds ready. If you're in-house, you know where to give. If you're online, covenantfusion.com, PayPal, or Tithely. We appreciate it. I pray that you would do the same thing if you're watching online, that you would sow with this expectation We sow for a reason, amen? We don't just throw the seed and expect something to happen. We sow it on purpose. So let's pray and let's hold up. If you have your seed physically or if you did it online or going to, it's okay. Lift up a hand as a symbol this morning. God, we sow our seed this morning with an expectation for your kingdom work to flow through that seed. For people to be healed, for the sick to be healed, for the lame to be raised, for the lepers to be cleansed, for demons to be cast out. Not just for us. We receive it for us, but we receive it for our family. We receive it for our state. We receive it for our country. We receive that, Lord. We we sow this seed for your kingdom work, Lord. Wherever you will flow, wherever you choose to flow is where we want to flow. And so, Lord, we place this seed today. We give this seed. It says, freely you have been given. You freely receive, freely give. So, Lord, we freely give today, God. We freely give for your kingdom work to be at hand. And we place this seed with, your, with our expectation and your ability to make it into a mighty harvest. In the name of Jesus, we all said, Amen. Amen. Thank you again. And I'd like to ask Sheila to come up this morning to welcome your prayer request as well as to go lead us into Psalm 91. Thank you, Sheila. Our number 
Coming into an agreement is so powerful. And everyone has burdens, but you don't have to carry your burdens alone. You can lift them up to the Lord and have someone come into an agreement with you that whatever you're asking for, God will take care of every single need. There's nothing too big for God. He can take care of everything. Remember, He created this earth. When you stop and think about all that He created, why would doing something for us be a, such a big thing for Him? He wants us to communicate with us and He with Him. And when we communicate with Him through prayer, that I'm sure he loves it. He loves us to have a personal relationship with him, even through good times, bad times. But remember, you can always call on this church and believe that somebody is going to pray for you and lift up your burdens. And please call 407-490-4019. That's 407-490-4019. And... Now we're going to read Psalms 91, and today this psalm has an even greater uh, meaning to myself and to Gail, because coming home from a prayer meeting on Thursday, God kept us from being involved in a terrible accident. The outcome would not have been good, but he saved us at the last second. So we are so thankful for God gave us his word in Psalms 91, how he would lift us up. And he did. And his angels kept us from totaling out my car and something awful could have happened to Gail or myself. So let us say these words and mean it from your heart and take it into your heart and know that God means what he says and he will do what he says. So let us begin. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the error that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at, you, at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Amen. Praise you, Lord. And now we want to welcome Pastor Shree. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. God is good. Amen. All right. I'm very excited about 2023. Amen. God is God is doing things and God is getting ready to do newer things. You know, many times we say that, but at the same time I want us to remember God is not new doing anything new. We are walking into the newness of his manifestation. Amen. So I'm I'm very thankful for his manifestation in our lives and uh, how it is getting ready to be bigger than we can ever imagine amen? amen so what we have seen the the i have not seen the ear have not heard you know that sort of a thing is what i want to get into and see how much god loves us 
Yeah, it's all the manifestation of what we see is only because of his love. If he didn't love, we wouldn't have it. Because he loves us, we can have it. You know, many times people ask about, um, uh, about the healing or what not. Why should you be healed? Um, think about that. Uh, why should I have this prayer answered? Why should I have this miracle? Why should I have this or that? The answer for that is simple. That God loves you. Because God loves you. Because God loves me. Maybe we should repeat that. Because God loves me. Come on. Because God loves me. What's the reason for this? Yeah, because God loves me. Why should I be delivered? Because God loves me. Why should I be healed? Why should I be whole? That's the answer. We don't need to find million and one answers. Why should I become rich? Because God loves me. That's the answer. Why should I be debt free? Amen. Amen. There don't have to be million and one reasons. Just what one reason is enough. God loves me. We got to bank on that. We got to remember that. How much the love of God works in us, for us, and through us. Amen. Amen. After the mantle is what I am going after. Um, many times we don't uh, um, understand what happens after. You know, we have to remember this thing. Um, Many but, but people are all excited. Like, say, let, let me tell you this. When 9-11 happened, um, the churches were filled with people. The churches were filled with people. Or even, let's say, uh, let's go a little backward. And uh, uh, when, the, when COVID-19 happened, everybody was streaming in. Everybody is taking time to listen to the word, listen to the song, however it can work out into their lives. And then after that is over, after the disaster or after the struggle is over, uh, it's hard. It's hard. We see people coming and uh, worshipping God when they are in struggle, when they are in trouble. But what happens after? The same thing is true not only with the struggle, but it is also true with God's goodness. When God's goodness or God's plan manifests in our life, we just stop there. We have to remember this thing. It's not, it's, not the, it's not the end of it. It's the beginning of it. That's why it's important that we need to understand what happened. And what has happened after that has happened. What do we do with it? That's why this uh, after the mantle. Last year we dealt about, we dealt on the mantle. What is the mantle? And when, when Elisha was uh, uh, dubbed to be a replacement for Elijah. And Elijah threw his mantle on him. And Elisha was expecting. Elisha has an earnest expectation. If we do not have an earnest expectation, the mantle won't work in our lives. The mantle is never going to work in our lives if we don't have a serious expectation about things. You know, God is looking for somebody who is serious about wanting what He has for them. Not only just desiring it, but having the expectation. And God was even dealing with me, even last night in a way, who has the courage? Let me ask you a simple question. Do you have courage to be healed? Do you have courage to be delivered? It takes courage for you to be healed. It takes courage for you to be debt free. It takes a lot of courage for you to be free from the oppression. Now one of the most important things that God is asking from us is, for this year, for 2023, can you have courage? You know, um, 
whenever uh, we were doing uh, this was something called um, um, when I was in India in school I used to go to something called NCC which is a similar thing to like ROTC here junior ROTC here so when I was doing that when we were doing it we will have a, a, a sergeant and um, he has to go to the commander that is coming in uh, that may have come the the uh, uh, and then uh, he has to go and ask him permission to come check the troops so w w whenever you are on the deck or what not it's it's very common in the in the navy they have to ask permission to be on the deck per permission to be here permission to be there Unless uh, they seek that permission, they are not allowed in. They are not, even though we may have a cordial relationship and everything is true, but you will have to have that protocol. In the kingdom of God, you will also need the permission, the permission to be healed. For you to seek the permission to be healed, the most important ingredient is courage. You will have to have the courage, permission. I'm asking every one of you, start thinking a little differently. Instead of begging for God to do these things, He is able to do all those things. I want us to go seek Him in courage, with courage, seeking the permission for you to be healed. For you to be delivered, for you to be promoted, for you to be debt free, for you to be whatever you are desiring in His Word. And now what are we doing? We are honoring Him as the chief of the armies. As the commander in charge. When we can honor Him like that, honor goes both ways. Whenever we ask the permission to come check our troops, he honored that. He has to honor that. You know, many times in the drills, I always, well, you guys are out of your mind. Why do you have to ask permission? You came all the way just to check our troops, isn't it? Why, why do I have to come back and stand here to ask you permission to come check this out? The more I understand the kingdom of God, the more I am understanding what is these, what are these permissions, what are these protocols, why do, why do we need them? I'm here to encourage everyone, sometimes we may not understand everything, but we have to understand something. If you want to have the benefits of the kingdom of God, understand how it operates. We have to operate in such a way that we may be benefited from the kingdom of God. Many times, many of us as Christians, as believers, kingdom of God is a passing cloud. We just watch it while it goes. But remember, Jesus traveled on the clouds. That means we have the permission to travel on those clouds. That kingdom of God has been given the permission we have been granted the access so we may step on the kingdom and utilize the kingdom of God to the fullness. I want us to have a resolution. You know, we all have different resolutions for 2023. Losing weight, losing that, losing this, gaining this, gaining that. Everybody has a mandate. How much of money I should make this year? How much of this? How much of that? Everybody. Let's also have a mandate of growing in the kingdom. Let's also have an understanding of the kingdom protocols. His way of doing things. Amen. This after the mantle is something, um, my attempt for this is for us to be taught of the kingdom ways. That we may position ourselves and prepare ourselves to see the greater glory of God. You know, we are bound to have greater glory. As much as the markets and the world around us is predicting we are bound to have a recession. I'm here to predict something. We are bound to have His glory. What do you want? 
You want the darkness or you want His glory? Choice is yours. That's why the distinction is, if you are going to walk and operate on this earth as an emotional man, as, as, as Ahab the king, as an emotional, derived by your emotions, all you will get is darkness. All you will inherit is darkness. Don't tell me I didn't tell you. I just want us to have a clean and clear understanding how much your emotional person is your enemy. He weakens you. He weakens you so much that you can't see what God is trying to show you. Because you're caught up in your emotional bubble. We have to learn how to fire and get rid of Ahab that is in us. If we don't get rid of the Ahab that is in us, we will not be able to get rid of the Ahab that is on the, in the streets. And not only that, if we don't get rid of the Ahab that is in us, we will never be able to get rid of the Jezebel. Everybody realizes and recognizes the Jezebel, but you can't do a thing about it. You see it politically, you see it happening all around us, people are controlling us. Everything is being done in a control format. How are we going to control the controller? That's the most important question you have to ask for yourself. How do I control the controller? Kill Ahab that's in you. Because you are his feed. You are Jezebel's feed. Ahab is Jezebel's feed. If there was no Ahab, Jezebel can't control. That's why it's important for us to understand what I am going after. I'm trying to break it down, the details of it as much as possible. Because you have been given a mantle upon you. If we don't know what to do with the mantle after the fact, what's the point of having the mantle? First Kings 19, chapter starting from verse, verse 15. I'm going to repeat this again. First Kings chapter 19, 15th verse. Then the Lord said to him, This is to Elijah, go return on your way to the wilderness, uh, to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Hazael as king over Syria. Also you shall anoint Jehu the son of Nimshi as king over Israel. And Elisha the son of Shaphat of Abel Meholah, you shall anoint as prophet in your place. Can somebody say in your place? Do you know you have to fire you? Think about that. Elijah was given the mission to fire him. One of the hardest things I have seen happen, many times there will be a big uproar about the uh, uh, migrants coming from other countries and working here. A lot of the times the, I have come across some of the stories that were like, like it, it hurt me so much because somebody that is from here born and brought up and went to school for four years and paid a whole lot of money into the system and accrued a lot of debt is now working some company like say for example Disney. This has happened in Disney. He was working for Disney and he was given a pink slip. And when the pink slip was given, he was also given an instruction. You have time for 90 days for you to work in this role. But while you are working in this role, the immigrant that I have gotten, you need to train him. It hurts. It stinks. And it stings. But, uh, but think about it here. Elijah was instructed by the Lord to find his replacement. Though those people are doing, though the Disney is doing it for their money gain, because the one who is coming fresh off the boat will work for half of her pay. That is how they did it. But um, it's, a, it's a different 
um, story here, what God is trying to replace is how to take it to the next level. His way of working. You know, Jesus finished his job. Would you agree? Jesus finished his job, but that's why he says on the cross it's finished. But his job that he entrusted us is not done. The church is supposed to do the church's job. He finished his job, the church. Now, look at the mantle job that, he's, that is happening here. The simile between Elijah and Elisha versus Jesus Christ and the church. And I will also break down some more things here because the church and Jesus Christ are not two different things. They both are one. That's what Jesus did. We, you and me are one body. But there was a mission when he asked them to anoint these people. It shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Hezekiah, Jehu will kill. And whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. The Elisha, who is this Elisha? Upon whom the mantle fell. The job that he is going to do is after the fact, after the mantle. So first and foremost, you have to understand the mantle has come upon you. Amen? Amen? We need to own that. The mantle is on me. Come on, church. The mantle is on me. Be bold about it. Be courageous about it. The mantle is on me. The mantle has come upon you the day you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The day you accepted Jesus Christ to be your King. Your kingdom have changed. Because you no longer belong to the Babylonian system. The, the Babylonian king who is the devil. You have, you, have, you, have, you have fired yourself from being the citizen of this world. And became the citizen of the kingdom of God. Amen. So when you have rules, rights, and regulations, I can be the perfect example. When I was an Indian citizen, my laws and rules and regulations were from India. But the moment that I have become a citizen of the United States of America, the United States of America laws apply to me. Because I'm a citizen. When you become the citizen of the kingdom of God, you have every bit of loyalty to the kingdom of God. That's why you will have to understand how to fire your emotional self. The Ahab that lives in you. Because that is the stronghold of the devil. You lived with him. You lived under his authority. And when you are, your loyalty, if you want to be loyal to the devil, let me tell you something. Be an emotional self. Whenever you are getting all emotional about things, I want you to remember one thing. You are only helping the devil. And the Babylonian system. It's got nothing to do with the kingdom of God. Jesus rejects, rejects it. Paul rejects it. Paul says, I crucify my flesh. Let me go, go, go with me to the... Um, you know, Elisha has a killing job. Think about that. God is anointing Elisha to be a killer. Do you know that? That you have been anointed by God to be a killer? Think about that. What do you kill? Not people. Kill the killer. That is our job. The thief comes only to steal, kill and destroy. 
we destroy the thief we destroy the killer we destroy that is our mission that is what the church is the church's job is to do that i'm going to explain more in a bit matthew chapter 11 starting at verse 1 <coughs> Now I pray that Lord will open your eyes for this. I pray that God will show more into this that you may position yourself in Christ. Amen. Maybe you can boldly declare, Lord, open my eyes. Come on, church. Lord, open my eyes. Matthew 11, if you think your eyes are already open, you might be lying to yourself. There needs to be a lot more opening that has to happen. There is a lot more opening. I, I know I'm be, I've been following God uh, for a, quite a while, but every single opportunity I get, my eyes are getting opened more. Matthew 11, starting at verse 1. Now it came to pass when Jesus finished commanding his twelve disciples that he departed from there to teach and to preach in their cities. And when John had heard in prison... Can somebody say in prison? You can still hear. You can still hear. But in prison, about what? About the works of Christ. Now Jesus is cousin. Are y'all with me here? He didn't know anything about Jesus' his cousin, but he heard about the works of Christ. The anointed one, not his cousin. Now, now, now he goes, the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? Now think about it, a frame before this, it was John the Baptist who acknowledges, Behold the Lamb. Now it's the same John the Baptist who is asking the question, Are you the coming one? Did the prison change him? I'd like for us to explore this a minute. Are you the coming, uh, coming one or do we look for another? Or, or even, even in this statement, it also uh, tells me um, th that John is trying to force Jesus to become what he want, what John wants him to be. Ready or not, here I come. <laughs> John the Baptist is trying for Christ to become what he wanted. So he sends his two disciples asking him this question. Are you the coming one? Now, now, what John was asking is the same question you and me ask. Why and how, I will explain in a minute. Are you the coming one or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things which you hear and see. Aren't those the same things that, that John heard in prison? Why is Jesus Christ trying to reiterate to him, to these two disciples, tell them, go tell him what has happened, what, what you see and what you heard. What, is, what, what, what does he say? Go tell John the things which you hear and see, the blind see and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Who is that me? Christ, not Jesus. Christ, I want us to think about Christ. Jesus for us is so familiar, we forget that he is the anointed. That's why I'm trying to get after Christ. Jesus means Savior, Yeshua, Joshua, Messiah, Savior. Christ means the anointed. Let 
that word offended is 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 if i simply break it down you, you can put a simple statement off ended in other words i can i can i can also say this thing he ended before its time that's why i'm telling you your emotions stop you before it can come to fruition that's why jesus stands against it so much emotions will stop you but offended because of me christ as they departed jesus began to say to the multitudes concerning john what did you go out into the wilderness to see a reed shaken by the wind but what did you go out and see a man clothed in soft garments indeed those who wear soft clothing are in king's houses now you look at jesus what was he addressing he is not addressing the streets he is addressing the palaces A moment ago he was addressing the poor now he is addressing the king's palace Bear with me I'm taking you somewhere Those who wear soft clothing are in king's houses but what do you get what did you go out to see a prophet yes I say to you and more than a prophet for this is he of whom it is written behold i send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way before you the messenger can somebody say the messenger you know the church is the messenger cuz we are the one who has the message and you have been saved because of the message the message of the gospel If it wasn't for that you don't have salvation. The message has come to us, it led us to Christ. The messenger has come before Jesus Christ, his job is to lead us to Christ. And that very same message or the very same messenger is questioning the Christ. Why is that? And the Christ answered him back, answered the messenger back and said, "Hey, you see these signs? The blind can see, the lame can walk, the dead are raised. As surely I say to you, among those who are born of women, <coughs> this is this is also I want us to understand something. The messenger also implies the days of Noah. The message went on through Noah. Noah is a preacher. He's a preacher of righteousness. He preached and he preached and he preached every single day of his life until he stepped on that boat. And the Lord closed the door. The same thing you and me as a church will be doing. Are doing. but the same conflict that john is going through will also be something you and me go through which is as surely i say to you among those who those born of women there has not risen one greater than john the baptist born of the women are you born of women remember when you got born again you're born of the spirit glory be to god in heaven you're no longer born of the woman but you're born of the spirit you're moving on from the physical identity to the spiritual identity if we are still stuck in john the baptist the messenger you may be the greatest person but you don't scale too much john the baptist was stuck in that one site Now Jesus Christ is trying to break it down for us. He says there is no one greater than him, but he but he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. 
Now look at this. He's talking about the kingdom of this earth. And now all of a sudden he entered into the kingdom of heaven. And when he have entered into the kingdom of heaven, the greatest role that a man could have in this kingdom of earth is now the least. The first shall be the last and the last shall be the? But I'm, 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 I'm still not there at all. I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the violent take it by force. The violent take it by who is that violent? That's the Jezebel I'm talking about. The kingdom of heaven is suffering not because the kingdom of God, heaven is weak, but because the one to whom it was entrusted is still operating in the, Jezebel, in, in the Ahab's spirit. Because of that, the Jezebel still has a hold. Now they are taking it by force. That is exactly what is happening right now in our schools or in our communities or in anywhere that we see. The kingdom of God is being taken away. How the kingdom of God operates, that's what they don't want. They are fine and okay with the thoughts and the ideas or the emotional quest of this God figure. But they don't want anything to do with the kingdom of God. The precepts of God, the ordinances of God, the commandments of God. And they are forcefully taking it away. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you are willing to receive it, he is Elijah who is to come. Do you see Jesus merging here? John the Baptist that lived with, Eli with, with the, uh, in the past is now G John the Baptist. Jesus Christ is merging him with Elijah. This is Elijah. But look at the, look, look at the uh, statement he makes. And if you are willing to receive it. Now the question for you is, are you willing to receive it? Are you willing to receive? What am I receiving here? You're still putting me in the confusion. I can see the faces. But I'm, <laughs> I'm going to take you in a minute over there. But the thing here is, if you are willing to receive it, you will have it. If you are not willing to receive it, you may never have it. John the Baptist implies a finished job. But anyway, Elijah who is to come, he who has ears, let him hear. Now we are talking about the mantle from Elijah that has been transferred onto Elisha. What was John the Baptist's job? He was screaming all the way in the wilderness saying, Behold, I'm preparing the way. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. That was his scream. That was his preaching. Repent. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare. He is preparing the way for Elisha. Jesus Christ. I want us to understand something here. Elisha has a mission. In a similar in a way, in, in, in a similar way, Jesus Christ has the mission. Has the mission, right? Now that's why when, when John the Baptist comes to him, he is confused. He's confused, he's wanting to see more than what is being displayed. 
He is looking for this Jesus Christ. He heard about this Jesus Christ. He saw the miracles that Jesus Christ have performed. He have seen the blind see. He have seen the lame walk. He have seen the dead resurrected. But that's not the end of Christ. That is where John the Baptist was questioning. Are you the coming one? Because the coming one is not only the Messiah, he is also the king. I'm only seeing the Messiah here. Where, what about the king? That was his question. Are we to look for another one? Is there a sequel for this? Is there a two part thing? Is there another one? You're going to finish this job and there is another one coming? Jesus gives him an affirmation and an assurance. No, no, no. Look, this is the first part of the story you have seen. But now the next part will begin when it begins. The mantle that has been thrown upon us, I want us to understand this thing. As much as we want to do the mission of Jesus as the Lamb, we also have the responsibility to do the mission of Jesus as the King. Because Christ doesn't stop at salvation. Christ goes all the way to his kingdom. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. The church is stuck somewhere here that we are questioning, are you the one or are, is there something else? The one that has been given to you is all. He is all for you. He is all in all. Remember Jesus Christ is all in all. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He began the salvation. He will end with the judgment. <coughs> now look at this. He goes on. But, that, but to what shall I liken this generation? Now he is talking to this generation. It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to their companions and saying, We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We moaned to you and you did not lament. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking and they say, look, a glutton and a wine biber is and a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is justified by her children. You are a child of God's wisdom. Always remember that. God didn't beget you out of anything. He begot you out of wisdom. That's why Bible says, that's why Jesus says, don't you dare call your brother Raka or fool. Because we are born of his wisdom. Whether you use it or not is up to us. But he, then, he be, now look at this. He finished all this explaining about John the Baptist. And he talks about Jesus, I'm the Christ, who heals you. He talks about all those things. And now, he is turning around. And then, he began to rebuke the cities. The continuity of his mission. He is not only healing the sick, but he is also bringing judgment on the cities. The continuity of Christ. We can stop Christ at healing the sick. We have to come to the place of rebuilding and restoring. 
Now he goes here and says he began to rebuke the cities in which most of his mighty works have been done. Have you seen mighty works of Jesus in this, in this nation? Now look at this. As soon as the works have been done, there is a rebuke coming from the Lord. There is a rebuke coming from the Lord into the cities. I want us to understand something here. Because they did not repent. Because they did not repent. What is repentance? Repentance is always implied to sin. Though it could be. But most of it is repentance. Is us changing our mind to think like a citizen of the kingdom of God. We got to change our mindset. We have to change how we think. If we still think like the Babylonian system, you are diluting the kingdom of God. You are bringing forth the Babylonian results in the kingdom of God. That is why where we are. We are still trying to marry the world. We are still trying to operate in the world. And we are still stuck in not being healed. I'm in no way saying no to the healing. I want us to understand. There is a continuity in Christ that which we have to embrace. While I am on my way to operating in the kingdom of God, I will be healed. Remember the leper story? While they were on their way, they got healed. A lot of the times we are not healed because we are not on our way. We are still twirling our thumbs, wanting to someone, can somebody put me down into this water? When the stirring happens. Can somebody put me down? Can somebody put me down? Can you heal me, Jesus? Jesus is like, can you be busy with my kingdom so the healing will come to you? While you are on your way, you will be delivered. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the lame will walk, the dead will be resurrected. That is part of us. That is bound to happen to us. That is not the end of Christ. Can somebody say amen to that? That is not the end of Christ. That is just a part of him. That is where John the Baptist was confused. He read him all the way through. Why don't I see the king? Why don't I see the king? That ought to be our question too. I want to see the king. Can we declare it? I want to see the king. Come on church, I want to see the king. I want to see the king. If you don't have that earnest expectation to see the king, you will not see the manifestation of kingdom of God in your life. That is why the mantle has come upon you. Mantle has not come upon you just to be healed, but for you to be operating in the kingdom of God. On one hand, Jesus was healing all these people. And on the other hand, he turns to these cities and he rebukes them. Now he is operating as the king. What does he say? Because they did not repent. Because they haven't changed their mind. They haven't stopped being a Babylonian system. They haven't stopped being under the oppression of Jezebel. They're still operating under Jezebel. Which is what we are doing. We are still operating under the Jezebel. And look what he says. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you have been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Do you know the miracles that have happened in this nation? If it has happened elsewhere, it would have been a different story. 
That's not my judgment. That's the Lord's. Nevertheless, He chose us. He's chose, he chose us to be His cities. The miracles that God has performed in you, if He had done half of that in someone else, they would have been even in a, a, a higher fire. They would have been changing their mind and lining up with the kingdom of God. But you and me are still stuck in this emotional self. That we are still glorifying Ahab. And we should be glorifying Christ the King. But I say to you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. Think about that. Tyre and Sidon is a covenant. They don't have any covenant with the Lord. They're not part of Jerusalem. And he is talking, they will have more grace than y'all. If anybody is trying to tell you the lie, the church is not going to be judged. You are being lied to. Quit playing church. We need to stop playing church. That was the reason mantle was upon us. Not for us to be playing the church. Playing the flute and playing the harp. But he is looking for somebody. Who will pick up the mantle. But I say to you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum. You know, Capernaum is, is Jesus' uh, 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 where his home is. He dwelt there. It is where he lived. And even him living there in spite of him living there. In spite of him doing all the miracles he did in there. That city didn't repent. Who are exalted to heaven will be brought down to Hades. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Sodom, you know the judgment of Sodom and Gomorrah, God wiped it off in a second. And he is trying to compare something here. Jesus the king is giving us some insight into his judgment. How his judgment functions in our lives. Now if Sodom and Gomorrah didn't get spared. You think the church is going to get spared. Who is fine with homosexuality. And that is what the church is doing now. They are playing the case of Sodom and Gomorrah. If Sodom and Gomorrah couldn't escape the wrath of God, how much will the church... The church, not the world, the church. You know why the church is doing that? Because you have not divorced Ahab. We are still operating with Ahab, that emotional self. Because we are still operating in that emotional self and forgetting the fact you are a spirit and you are born again in the image of Christ. God fired you from Ahab but you didn't fire you from Ahab. That's why Jesus says pick up your cross and follow me. The mission of that picking up his cross, picking up the cross and following is about firing Ahab. The government is making the laws and the rules, you know why? Because the church is operating with Ahab. As long as the church is operating with the Ahab, Jezebel will have control. Thank God for the mantle that has been thrown on Elisha. You know why? The Elisha under Elisha is when Jezebel dies. That's where the mantle becomes so important. 
if we don't operate in the mantle, if we don't operate under the mantle, we will continue to empower Jezebel. You can cry all you want. It doesn't mean a thing. I see all these things that happen, all these posts that get posted, all these comments that get made, all these protests that get done. Nothing will change until you fire Ahab. That is the mantle that is upon you to kill Ahab. If you don't kill Ahab, you will never kill Jezebel. I talked about it last week. The Elisha's killing is not with the sword. It's not a sword killing. That's what you and me need to engage in. That's the warfare that matters the most. He says, which were, which were, which who you have had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. You know he wasn't lying, right? Jesus wasn't lying there. He knew exactly if the same things would have happened in Sodom, it would have been saved. The church is playing too much because they are offended. They are thinking this is not the Christ. The same way John the Baptist was offended. He is stopping in the middle thinking Jesus Christ is all about love. is all about healing the sick. No, no, no. There is beyond that. There is a judgment that he have declared and decreed upon us. Every city, every nation, every tongue, every thought will come under that subjection. As a matter of fact, every word you speak is going to come under that judgment. But I say to you, it shall be, 24th verse, But I say to you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in that day of judgment than for you. That should be a place where you cry for Orlando. That should be a place where you cry for Florida. That should be a place where you cry for Missouri. That should be a place where you cry for Virginia. That should be a place where you cry for your cities, cry for your states, cry for your United States of America. If God did not spare Sodom and Gomorrah, why would He spare us? As a matter of fact, He says it will be even higher. That's why God is, Jesus is inviting us into this mantle. Let's play the mantle job. Let's play the mantle job. Jesus explains further. Luke chapter 4 and 16th verse, he talks about it. Luke chapter 4, 16th verse, where does he say? So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. As is his custom, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He, sent, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to recovery and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable ear of the Lord. You know, this is part of the prophecy that Isaiah prophesied. Did Jesus read all of it? If we go back to Isaiah, you will see there is much more. But what is Jesus acknowledging here? This part of Christ is fulfilled now. The rest of it is coming. The rest of it. The Christ who have fulfilled being the healer, being the deliverer, being the one who lifted poor people out of their oppression. The same Christ is coming back as the king. It's the continuity of Jesus Christ. It's no different. 
It's the same Christ who was the Savior. It's the same Christ who is the King. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Are we just so content and so stuck with Jesus the Savior that we are not looking for Jesus the King? Christ the King. That is why you have been given the mantle, not only to heal the sick, but also to bring order on this earth. That is, when you are doing that, what are you doing? You're being a Christian, Christian, follower of Christ. Christ the Savior, Christ the King. Christ the Savior, Christ the King. You have to operate in both. That's why Jesus said you are a priest and a king. Don't stop with Christ the Savior. That's what he reads and he says. Then he closed the book. He gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And eyes and the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. That part of the prophecy is fulfilled. Because they saw the blind see. They saw the deaf hear. They saw the dead resurrected. Now I'm asking you church, this is a Nehemiah, Nehemiah's plan. Nehemiah's plan was to not only to protect the door front of what they had, and on the other side they have to build the wall. It's a simultaneous job, not one or the other. A Christian has both jobs. Not only that we will heal the blind, heal the sick, but we'll also heal the cities. Who is going to bring order to this land? Who is going to bring order to the nation? Who is going to bring things into order? It's you. You have been chosen, the mantle has come upon you, not only to do these miracles, but also to establish the kings and the fire them. That is part of church's job. And that is what, if you study Elisha's life, after the mantle has come upon him, that's what we are going to study tomorrow, next week. That is, that would be the second part of this. You know, the, it will be the fourth part of after the mantle. But the next part, I encourage you to study the miracles of, that, that Elisha have performed. It will be in Second Kings. All the miracles that he have performed. How he was taking authority over the demons, over the lack, over, 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 over death. He goes through all those things, but he doesn't stop there. Then he closed the book. He says, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. John the Baptist was not a fool. He knows Christ from cover to cover. He only saw part of it manifest. What about the rest? What about the rest? You know, in our, in, our uh, in, in movies, we have this to be continued. To be continued. Jesus Christ is to be continued. We can't close the book on Jesus Christ or Christ at the Savior level. We can't close the story there. I think that's where the church is failing so much. That we are not understanding the power of the mantle. That we are not able to understand the full picture of Christ. We are so stuck in Christ the Savior. That we are not pressing toward Christ the King. My prayer is that God would ignite us. These are not two different Christs. Even though we like to dif differentiate the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's the same God. 
Amen. The same thing is true. It's not the Christ the Savior and Christ the King. It's the same Christ. The anointing has come upon him to fulfill the whole mission. If he had fulfilled in healing, that is where again the church fails. Because you don't even see the fulfillment of Christ the Savior. Because you're not exploring the healing. You're not exploring the deliverance. You're not exploring the acceptable ear of the Lord. The ear of Jubilee is about being debt free. We have to celebrate that. We have to bask ourselves in those things. In those miracle, miracles of God. So we may also be turning around the same way Christ turner, turned around and said. It would have been better for you. In the name of Jesus. I lift the curse over this city in Jesus name. I lift the curse over this nation. In the name of Jesus. That is your authority y'all. Oh. That is what you are in Christ. Not just for you to walk to the lame person. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. That is yours. And at the same time, you have the same right and same power and same authority to go to a city and say, City in the name of Jesus be resurrected. No demon in hell can prosper here because this belongs to the king. That's the battle. God is asking for. Be busy with both. Be busy with both. We have to be busy with both. That is what the mantle is for. Christ the Savior is not the end of Christ. I have these statements I want to end with. Christ the Savior is not the end of Christ. What is your expectation? You have to ask, what is your expectation when it comes to Christ? Is it offending you? Because you didn't get healed? Is it offending you because your prayer did get, didn't get answered? Because you're in the middle of the story. You're still in the middle of the story. Is the story of Christ a sequel? You know, we have a, we have a thing in, 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 in Hindi, they say, picture abhi baki hai, which means the picture is still pending. You know, back in the days, you, if you uh, have watched any of the old movies, there will be a, 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 a two-part movie. You will have an intermission in the middle where you can get out. Right now if you watch any Indian movies, you know, it's not practiced here. If you go watch it in, Indi in India, there will be an intermission. You will be given a recess so you can go do whatever you want, a 15 minutes recess and you will come back. But in those movies, in Indian movies, they have this, this uh, momentum, right? By the interval scene comes, there has to be a bang which creates an expectation for the second half. That's how movies, they, the movie directors, they keep the anticipation of the movie. And what Christ is, nothing but an intermission. The picture is still pending. The movie is still pending. We have to be playing the next part. The whole thing you paid, <laughs> Jesus, you know, when you go to the movie, you paid the move ticket for the whole thing. The first half and the second half. Don't walk away from the theater in the middle. Jesus didn't pay the price for you to just experience the first half. He paid the price for you to experience the full story. Till the end. Till the end. That's why he gave a revelation. It all comes from your expectation. If you are expecting a revealed king, you are ready for it. You are expecting, you have to expect uh, the revealed uh, a savior. And then you also need to expect the revealed king. 
Now last question, what is the rebuke of Christ about your city? Intercessor, watchman, I'm calling you in the name of Jesus. Pray for that. Pray for that. That we may not see the plight of Sodom and Gomorrah on us. That's the judgment that has been declared, decreed upon this nation. The same judgment that he have decreed on Sodom and Gomorrah. That is what the Lord have revealed to me. But before that manifestation happens, his church has a chance. Let's take up on that. His church has an opportunity to, to, to stand at, as his church and declare his oracles to see the manifestation of his glory. Amen. Remember the Sodom and Gomorrah had the same chance. If only there were five righteous. Abraham was interceding on behalf of that. He says, the Lord says, if only five righteous. Come on righteous church. Come on righteous church. I'm the righteousness of God. Come on declare it. I am the righteousness of God. I am the righteousness of God. Come on. I am the righteousness of God. I decree and declare the righteous laws of, uh, on this land. We release the righteousness upon this land. There shall not only be a revival, there shall be a reformation. An awakening that leads us into a reformation. For us to have the reformation, learn church, I plead you in the name of Jesus. Learn how to slay Ahab. Your emotional self. May the Lord reveal us and strengthen us that we may be courageous to do His will on this earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. Let us end the service with our confession. Three, two, one. We are Covenant Fusion Church. We are a body of believers. We are blessed to be a blessing. And we are filled for His glory. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Thank you for tuning in.